Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany and in today's video, we're gonna be doing a Thanksgiving marathon from last year. So 2022 was my first year hosting Thanksgiving and in today's video, I put together all of my videos from last year of my planning, my haul, of the things that I purchased, both from my tablescape and for dinner itself, as well as some recipes. And I figured this would be a great way to kick off Thanksgiving season and prepare us for my upcoming videos for Thanksgiving this year. So I hope that you enjoy this marathon video and I will see you in the next one. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany and I am so excited to be starting a new series of videos with you. And we're gonna call this Thanksgiving First Timer. This is my first time ever hosting Thanksgiving, especially in my new home. And I am, could not be more excited. I am so happy that my family has gifted me with the honor of hosting such a fabulous holiday. It has always been my mother-in-law who hosts and I'm so thankful that she has allowed for us to host here in our new home. Don't get me wrong, she's still cooking a turkey and a lot of sides. However, we're gonna be doing it here in our new home, so I'm so excited. With all of that said, I had a lot of planning to do. I still have a lot of planning to do. I have a lot of cooking ideas, baking ideas, tablescape ideas and I figured I'd take you along with me so over the next couple of weeks we're gonna go over some fun things that we can plan for Thanksgiving uh, everything from tablescapes um, decor halls meal planning um, as well as activities to do with your family while they're visiting so let's go ahead and get started for today's video part one we're gonna be going through a haul of the items that I have picked up already for Thanksgiving. We're gonna talk about where I got them. Uh, I will try to tell you how much they cost. I'll try to have everything linked that I can down in the description box below. Um, I did try to find items on Amazon, Walmart, Michaels, everything is affordable. I tried to make sure that this was easy to do um, as well as easy on your wallet. So let's get started by going through the things that I purchased and then we're gonna get right on into a really fun tablescape idea. Okay, so now let's just talk a little bit about some of the things that I have been collecting um, for our tables. And of course, I'm in a quiet house and now talking, so Charlie's gonna be up and moving around. If you hear the clickety clackety, that's her. Um, and if you hear the coughing in the background, that's Griffin, God bless him. We're all just trying to get over this change of the season um, cold. So let's start with some of the things that i have picked up so i want to start with some things i've grabbed for um serving one of which i want to tell you now so you can go grab one if it's still available by you and that is this turkey platter <clears throat> this turkey platter is from hobby lobby it's 50 percent off right now it is ceramic and uh, it's technically $40 normally. Um, however, at 50% off, I got this beautiful turkey tray for $20. And I think that that is a steal. It's really a, a nice size. It's got the beautiful turkey detail. And <clears throat> I just love everything about it. I love the color. It's very heavy, so it's very substantial. And we didn't have a turkey platter, so now we do. <laughs> We're official. So. Go to your Hobby Lobby now and score yourself one of these turkey platters. Another item that I just recently scored at Hobby Lobby for our Thanksgiving festivities was this adorable wood beaded uh, cake stand or pie stand in this sense. Uh, it's normally $45, however, it was 50% off. Um, <clears throat> so it is a little bit of an investment, but I think it's stunning and I'll use it for all holidays um, as well as you know other activities. Shoot, I would even just put some cookies on this and put them out for my family for dinner. So, um, you know, this felt like a really good investment to me. But again, Hobby Lobby 50% off. It was $45, and it was there literally 
um, two days ago. I just snagged this, so go get you one. Another item that I just recently scored from Hobby Lobby is this adorable copper napkin holder. Now, I do have cloth napkins for my table setting. However, you always need some non-cloth napkins because you never know what you're gonna need them for. So my plan is to have these out um, by the dessert so that way when people are coming to get dessert they can have these and I'm also going to use um, Disposable plates for our dessert so that way, you know Usually some cleanup happens between dinner and dessert and that way um, We're not redoing any more dishes except for like mugs for coffee and things like that. So thought this would be really pretty to have our uh, Disposable napkins in this was $12.99. However, again, I scored it for 50% off. Okay Another item I just scored at Hobby Lobby for Thanksgiving are these uh, Utensils now I had picked up some of these a while back as well. I think I now have five packs of these they're like a like a copper rose gold um, uh, uh, Serving Set. So you've got two large forks and two large spoons. They were $3.99, but again, 50% off. Um, but these are gonna be great. They are plastics. They're not like the highest end in quality. However, um, they'll be really pretty on the table for, or on the um, buffet area for all of our sides and goodies. Okay, so the last item that I want to encourage you to check Hobby Lobby for is table uh, cloth. So this beautiful ruffled uh, linen tablecloth which you're gonna see me use here in just a little bit, is from Hobby Lobby. Now this is pretty pricey, it was $45, however I got it at 50%, um, and I bought, I have bought one, um, I think I have three now, I bought one from like at three different visits, so I kind of spread it out, um, because we are going to have three different tables. So my main table, and then we're gonna have two folding tables here in this open area in my house. So um, <clears throat> these are really great quality. I used this one uh, for my in-laws party for their wedding anniversary. So it's already been washed and cleaned and it's absolutely still in fantastic quality. In fact, I think it even feels softer than it did when I um, first used it. So. Definitely a fantastic quality and I would highly recommend these. I think what's great about these is they are um, really feminine and really beautiful, but they are neutral. So you can use them for any holiday and you know, they'll, you can decorate them with whatever you have and it will be perfect. So definitely recommend checking out Hobby Lobby for their beautiful ruffled linen tablecloths. Okay, next up, let's talk Dollar Tree for a minute. So I was able to score these incredible gold chargers from the Dollar Tree. They were $1.25, they say charger plate, and they have them both in, or three. They have silver, gold, and I think they also have like a rose gold, um, but I just thought these are perfect. The back is black, but um, the... <coughs> The plates that I'm gonna be using are from my own kitchen. These are the French Countryside by Mikasa. And um, I just think that they look really pretty on the charger. So um, chargers are completely decorative. It isn't something you have to have. However, um, they do look really nice. So what I pictured doing is for all of the adults having a charger and for the kiddos not having a charger because I think I was only able to snag 16. Um, so I don't need to have one for everybody. However, I can't say that I'm not gonna go back and keep looking because for $1.25, you can't beat it. And again, they're gold. They'll be great for all holidays. I can use these again for Christmas and everything. So definitely check out your Dollar Tree for some chargers. The other thing I scored at the Dollar Tree are these faux leather words. Now these say blessed, grateful, I think just blessed and grateful. There's four pieces in each. Um, and these I'm going to put across the, t the plates and the napkin, um, just as a little touch. Now this is, again, very Pinteresty, very over the top, completely unnecessary. However, for $1.25, I felt like, why not? In a perfect world, if I could afford anything, um, I would probably get some that are uh, 3D wood pieces that have just you know been 3D printed or forge cut, but, um, these will do for now. Okay, so let's talk napkins really quickly. So I 
found the most beautiful napkins that I had ever seen that I was so very excited to purchase and to find. However, I have only been able to find one set of eight and that is these amazing plaid napkins here. I am still on the hunt for more. <clears throat> Do not get me wrong, I am still searching for more. I actually have friends searching for me as well. Um, however, I figured even if I can't use these for every single person, I did purchase another set of orange from Amazon, so then I have these two here. So even if I have to do every other plate or if we just do one table with these and the other tables with these, we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. I'm not 100% sure. I am still holding on to hope that over the next month, I'm still able to find some more of these. For this set of eight, this was $12.99, which I think is a fantastic price. Um, they're beautiful, they're really great quality, and I'm excited to use these. I am going to wash and dry these before actual Thanksgiving um, and probably give them a little iron, but that way they're clean for everybody when they come to enjoy the delicious meal. Oh, I did forget to mention one other thing that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I just grabbed this yesterday when I was there. It's this um, golden foiled Happy Thanksgiving banner. Um, I saw this really cute picture on Pinterest <clears throat> of a woman who did a Friendsgiving and she hung like a Happy Friendsgiving sign from the two lights above her island. I thought it was really pretty and I thought, I'm gonna try to do that. So then I saw this. It might be a little big, it feels really big, so it may not work, we'll see. But um, if not, I can find another place for it. I can put it here above my window or I can put it over um, on the buffet, but um, we've gotta find a place for it because I thought it was really pretty. So, Okay, let's talk Michaels for a minute. So Michaels is also having a fantastic sale on all of their fall items, including their Thanksgiving items. And what I find so incredible about this is because it's so late in the season, although it's not late at all if you ask me, um, because it's so late in the shopping season, everything is on sale, but they're still getting new items. So for example, when I went shopping for the fall items back in <clears throat> September, they didn't really have a lot of things for Thanksgiving. However, I went yesterday and they have a ton of new stuff for Thanksgiving. And I picked up a bunch and well, not a bunch, but everything was 50 to 60% off. In fact, I think a lot of it was 60% off. So that was fantastic considering it was brand new items for Thanksgiving that had barely been in the store and they were still all on sale. So let me show you what I snagged. My favorite thing that I snagged is this beautiful um, cutting board or charcuterie tray, whatever you would like to call it. And it says a season to be grateful. Um, which I am so grateful right now as I am looking out my window, there was a big gust of wind and there are, I don't know, a hundred leaves falling right now. It's absolutely beautiful. It's so magical. I love it. But anyway, back to the charcuterie board. This board is $30 and it's really big. Um, however, like I said, I got it for 50 or 60% off. I can't remember which one, but uh, so I only paid, you know, roughly around $15 for it. So I thought that that was really appropriate price for how nice this is. I also grabbed some decorative pine cones. Uh, these were $6.99 for this bag. Uh, my vision is to have these across the table. Um, I'm probably gonna grab another bag just because I think pine cones are really pretty. I can put them in a dough bowl. There's lots of things I can do with these um, that I think would be really pretty. So I think I'm gonna grab some more, especially for you know $3.50. Um, Back in Las Vegas, my in-laws had a uh, pine tree in their front yard, and so we used to just get pine cones from there, from their yard. But these also have like little dry pumpkins, like little dry potpourri pumpkins, and it smells not really cinnamony, but kind of uh, like maybe pumpkin spice. But it says pecan caramel scented. Yeah, I could I could see that, but you have to get close to smell the the scent. Um, it definitely, like sitting here, it doesn't smell. Like you know how sometimes you get those cinnamon brooms or the cinnamon pine cones and it just like takes up residence in your nostrils and you just can't smell anything else? That is not what is happening here. So um, don't be afraid. They definitely do not have a very strong scent. Um, and if you do think that they smell too strong, you can spray them with some clear enamel um, and that will help to dilute the smell. I also picked up these little wood, uh, 
It's a, they say party confetti or party scatter. They're little wooden um, leaves, and I just thought that they would be really pretty to kind of sprinkle on the table. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have a runner on every table. We will see, I haven't fully decided, but um, if not, I thought I could put these on some of the table if, if there's a table like the kiddos table that I decide not to put a runner on. These would be really pretty to put on there. The last thing I want to mention that I picked up at Michael's um, are these adorable little like leaf bowls. Um, I picked up two of these. I think they're technically for like a charcuterie board. Like let's say I was going to turn this into a Thanksgiving themed charcuterie board. You put this on here, you have some hummus or something in there um, or, or dip. Um, I think that would be absolutely beautiful and a wonderful thing to use it for. However, my vision is for cranberry sauce. So I thought we could have cranberry sauce in this um, and have this on like the big adult table. And then this is not Michael's, but at Target, I found these adorable little stoneware bowls these are by hearth and hand they were on clearance for $1.99 I scored three of them because that's all they had but I thought that these would also be great for size like um, like cranberry sauce so of course you always have a jelly cranberry sauce a whole jelly or a whole cranberry sauce um, so I have you know multiple of these to have at different tables and um, we could also use them for future charcuterie boards plus I love the color of both of these I love brown um, this one here is just such a warm brown and I just think that it will look so beautiful on any tablescape so I'm really glad that I found this I just found this yesterday um, I don't I think it was I think it was $3.99 $3.99 maybe maybe $5.99 the most but again, 50 to 60% off, so go snag you some. They were still there when I went yesterday. And while we're on the topic of like serving wear, I also want to mention these glasses that I picked up at Walmart. These were from the Better Homes and Gardens line. Same thing with these bowls. Uh, but these are from Walmart. They're from the Better Homes and Gardens line. And I want to say they were less than $2.50 or around $2.50. Um, and I have 12 now. So um, not everybody drinks, you know, wine or cocktails. However, I thought that these would be really pretty on the table setting. Um, I will have a glass beside them as well for water or any other kind of drink. But I love the color of these. I had bought them for myself and figured I might as well grab some for holiday holidays as well um, and I'm so glad that I did I love the size and the shape and they're just really chic and they'll look really pretty on the table okay so now let's talk Amazon really quickly so first things first I did purchase some table runners on Amazon I have not opened them yet so let's open it together I've just been collecting things over here on the side and um, waiting until you know this video to open them but I did pick up this orange um, buffalo check runner. Now I saw this really pretty picture on Pinterest. I'm gonna actually put it right here for you to see, but I found this picture on Pinterest. I love the cozy feeling of it. It's not super like fancy. I don't want family to feel like they have to be fancy when they're here for Thanksgiving, but I want it to feel elevated. I want it to feel special like a holiday, but not like everybody can't you know just enjoy themselves. So. I loved the Buffalo check in that picture. So I snagged a couple of these. I grabbed one for the main uh, adult table and then I grabbed one for, ideally what I was thinking is for my, um, the buffet behind my couch because I don't want anybody putting drinks or anything on it um, <clears throat> and staining the wood because it does stain incredibly easy. So. If I had one of these on there, I thought that that would be ideal. And then we'll have one for the main table. All of the items that I'm talking about today, I will have linked for you down below. The ones from Amazon will be linked in my Amazon storefront. Um, and I wanna say these were somewhere around $8.99. They're very thin, they're nothing fancy, but you know, you're just looking to add color and texture to your table. Doesn't have to be expensive. I already showed you the orange napkins that I found on Amazon. Um, these, I think there are, there are eight in here or 12 in here, I can't remember. It doesn't say. I wanna say it looks like there might actually be, I think there's eight. I'll have it linked for you down below though. Um, good, I thought it was a good price. 
Okay, so quite possibly my favorite item that I got for the table are these beautiful candle holders. Now, they are like a beautiful copper color. Uh, it says it's a tea light holder, and I love the design on them. I think they're so pretty. They're small, so they're not going to bother anybody, like, um, you know, impede on anybody's vision when we're sitting at the uh, dining room table. But I thought they're really pretty to give us a little bit of mood light. And I also picked up some tea lights from Amazon. Um, so we're gonna have real tea lights inside of here instead of the fake ones. The fake ones give off a really gold glow. I want like a real natural glow, so. I got real tea lights. We're gonna make it real cute in here. Again, just making it feel elevated without it feeling fancy and like, um, I don't know, elitist or, um, you know, like you can't just be chill. Like it is still Thanksgiving and it is still just family. So I wanna make it fun and fancy without feeling like, do we even live here? Okay, the next item that I wanna talk about from Amazon um, is a eucalypt, some eucalyptus, um, Garlands. I haven't opened them yet, so let's open them and see how they are. I read all the reviews, and the reviews are pretty good, so fingers crossed. This actually comes with five individual garlands, and again, my vision, uh, I was running off of that inspiration picture that I saw on Amazon, I'm sorry, on Pinterest, um, but I also figured I could use this garland for um, Christmas as well. So I love eucalyptus, we've talked about this before. And um, so this garland here, and actually it's pretty, it's really pretty. So it's silver dollar eucalyptus, if you're curious about what kind it is. It definitely needs some like zhuzhing, you know what I mean? I need to like go through it and kind of plump it all up and, and separate them all and you know, um, make them look a little bit more full. They've all been oh, compressed. Okay, I just popped one off, but I'm just gonna pop it right back on. That's the great thing about faux, is that I don't have to worry about it dying or falling apart, or if I pop one off, pop a leaf off, I can just pop the leaf back on. So, um, my, my vision is to have this laying across the center of the table on all of the tables, as well as having one on my buffet behind the sofa and one over in my coffee bar area which we're gonna be using as a dessert bar. So I think that the five should do. If I need to, I can grab another five because I think they were somewhere in the 20-ish dollar range um, and I can double up if I need to but I think enough, you know, just a little bit of greenery is appropriate and then my plan is to use all of the little pumpkins that I have collected from the Target Dollar Spot, the, um, from Michael's, from, uh, I grabbed some from Hobby Lobby, like all, Dollar Tree, all the places that I have collected all these little pumpkins and just decorating the table with those and the pine cones and the votive candles and this should be really, really pretty. I am so excited. So I think that that wraps up everything that I have purchased. Now it's just gonna be time for us to put the table together and let's try out um, a little bit of a tablescape.
Okay, so that's it for video number one in this fun Thanksgiving series. In my next video, we're gonna talk more about what I have planned for food, the Thanksgiving planner that I actually use, like an actual planner. If you guys know me at all, you knew I was gonna have a planner. We're gonna talk menu and what we need to do to plan for who's bringing what and how many things of each we need to have, how to figure out servings and all of those good things. So I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to part two of my Thanksgiving first timer series. In this series, we are walking through my plans for prepping for my very first time hosting Thanksgiving. I am so beyond excited. We are officially now in the month of November, which means we are on our countdown to Thanksgiving. Now, I know a lot of you have probably already made your switch into Christmas, and if that's the content you're looking for, just know you're not gonna get it here yet. I am not ready to jump into Christmas yet. Um, we keep our Christmas decor up um, until at least January 6th, usually the weekend that follows that. So I don't rush to get my Christmas decor up. So sorry if you're ready for that kind of content. You're just not gonna find all of that here. I will, however, start showing you the great things that I have been picking up since you have to shop early because the rest of the world has decided that November is when Christmas begins. So I have been collecting items. You will be seeing those very soon. But in the meantime, we're gonna be preparing for Thanksgiving. I love this holiday. Not only is it a great time for us to get together with family, but it's a wonderful time to focus your energy on the things that you are grateful for in your life. I know this is something we should do every day. If you do, if you're really good about that, good for you. <laughs> I am not very good about that all of the time. I'd say probably a good 70% of the time I'm good at remembering to be thankful, but having one whole day where we get to talk about it as a family is really, really enjoyable. So I'm looking forward to that. In today's video, we're gonna be focusing on all of the things that I'm doing to help prepare um, for the, the meal, as well as activities while family is here, along with a little bit of decor. So if you're here for it, let's get into it. I'm gonna show you my Thanksgiving planner as well as some items I've purchased for some fun activities for us to do and some really affordable easy DIY decor pieces so let's get started so let's take a look at the actual Thanksgiving planner that I purchased on Etsy. I did purchase it from a company called Pretty Simple Pages, and I'll have it linked for you down in the description box. Um, it was incredibly affordable. It was less than $4. In fact, I think it's on sale. Um, and it does come with both a Thanksgiving version as well as a Christmas version. So um, it's two for one and I absolutely love that. So yeah, let's talk about what's in this. So this is the cover page. I did print this in A5 so that it would fit in my A5 planner, which I did purchase on Amazon. I do have this linked in my Amazon storefront. It's an incredibly affordable um, faux leather uh, A5 planner and I love it. We're gonna sort of put that to the side really quickly while we take a look at this planner. So, um, that is the cover. Now, I did just print it exactly as it was in the kit. I did not pick and choose pages, none of that stuff. I printed it exactly as it is. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the first page looks like a recipe. I think that this printed backwards, to be 100% honest with you. Did I do this backwards? Let's see. I may have printed it a little backwards. I'm not 100% sure, so um, just disregard if I printed it backwards, it happens. Um, but we've got recipe page, we've got a menu page for both appetizers, side dishes, breads, main course, uh, beverages and desserts, as well as a section for notes. 
And then uh, there is a daily planner, which I think is really cool. So like for the actual um, day, I think this would be great for um, like when you need to put things in the oven. So it does have like a schedule section here, has priority list, a to do, a note section. So it does, ha it's an empty date. So you could, you know, do this for more than one day, one day if you needed it, but this is great for the day of to determine when you need to put things in the oven and when things are gonna be, um, you know, when things need to come out, um, get plated, when you're expecting guests to arrive, those types of things. Um, there is a weekly planner, which I think is really important so that you can kind of get a game plan for your week. What days do you need to take your uh, turkey out of the freezer or the refrigerator? Um, what days should you, you know, pre-make some of your sides? Um, that kind of thing, as well as weekly goals and to-do list. And you can always print double of these. You know, this is just for one week, so this would just be the week of Thanksgiving. Um, for me, that's how I plan to use this, but you could um, do that differently. And then it does have a monthly planner here, so if there's things you wanted to plan, you know, in advance, so if you're traveling or um, if there's things that you need to get worked out, if you're hosting your event somewhere else or if you need to purchase items like I did, um, you could use the uh, planner for that. Um, there is a cooking schedule, look at that, so that's cool. So you could um, determine like what time you're gonna cook what, and then it does have a section for notes. I love a good grid paper like this when you are writing notes. I don't know, I just, I find taking notes like on a grid paper like that really satisfying. Um, there is a recipe planner, so it says dish, type, make ahead, cook time, prep time, and servings. So getting a like game plan for what it is that you're gonna be cooking. You've got a shopping list here broken down for you. Uh, you've got a baking section, so what dishes do you plan on baking? What supplies do you need? Um, this here is a venue sheet, so I was talking about if you have to have your event somewhere else, <coughs> excuse me, then you could um, write here all about what, you know, what other venue you plan on hosting your event at. Um, a guest list here with a, along with an RSVP. Um, and one thing that I think is super cool and very important is a section for allergies. So anybody that's coming that has allergies, this is really important. So um, I'll be utilizing this because there are uh, people outside of our family, both our immediate family and our extended family that are gonna be coming that I have never hosted before. So knowing you know what um, types of allergies they may have is really important. Uh, this is a potluck planner, so if you're having other people bringing dishes, this is a great way to plan for that. You wanna know what people are bringing ahead of time. You don't want somebody to just say, oh, I'll bring a dessert, or oh, I'll bring an appetizer. Well, let's make sure we know what it is, so that way you're not doubling up on things. So um, this is a great place to put that down. It, this does have recipe cards here, which is cool. They're actually pretty small. Um, I would probably just use this as more of a like quick reference. So for example, um, if I needed to know how long to bake the green bean casserole, um, which you can make ahead and then bake the day of, I would just put in here like how long I need to bake it and any additional prep that I need to do. That's what I plan on using this page for. Uh, budget tracker is, you know, if you want to keep track of how much you're spending. So my husband would probably love for me to use this sheet. I probably won't, but it might be good to look back and see like what I spent on food. You know what, that's probably a good idea. That's probably what I'll end up using it for is how much I actually spent on food so that way, you know, next year when I go to plan, I can plan ahead of time and know like how much money I need to have set aside for um, Thanksgiving dinner. Um, I'll probably have to round up considering inflation. Uh, tableware budget, so uh, this would be like what you saw in uh, video number one where I did the table scape and things like that, um, you know, decor budget, tableware budget. Yeah, I'm just gonna slip right over those. Um, kitchen inventory, this is really important. I'm gonna be doing this actually um, here in the next couple of days just to get an idea of what I already have, both in spices, um, you know, baking items, so like your flour, your sugar, your butter, um, you know, those types of things, what you have, and that way when you're doing your grocery list, you'll know if you need to purchase anything. 
Uh, this is a timeline, so one week before, five days before, two days before, one day before, and the day of, so you can get an idea, you know, a big kind of overview, um, you know, 30,000 foot view, if you will, of the entire day, so you can, or the entire week, so you can plan ahead. Um, this here is a decorations plan, so this is pretty cool. It talks about like how you want your, um, your table to look. So this is right here is like a color scheme, so you could fill this in with colors. It says reuse items owned, uh, purchase new items, and then it has a section for a mood board, which is really cute. Um, you can print this in any size you want, so if you wanted to print it in like full page, you also don't have to print it at all. You could just use it on your computer, um, which would probably be a great, that would probably be a great way to use this sheet, so you can just copy and paste, you know, things to your mood board. Um, I do have a mood board on my Pinterest, so if you follow me on Pinterest, you can see that board there. If you don't follow me on Pinterest, I would highly recommend it. Um, I've got the link down in the description box below. Uh, I post a lot of really good things, a lot of the recipes that I try, um, all of those good things are on Pinterest, so I'd highly recommend that you follow me there. And then of course, this is just a section for notes in the back. Um, so. We're going to get this hole punched and I'll probably fill in a couple of things. Um, I don't have a ton of stuff like right off the top of my head. I'll fill in what I can. Uh, we'll get it put into the planner and then um, we're gonna just do a quick inventory, I think. Now that I'm thinking about it, I might as well just do some kitchen inventory now so I know what I have. Um, and then we can talk about some other pre-planning items when it comes to food. Okay, so I took a second to uh, just get my uh, planner stuff put away and I wanted to show you some of the other things that I have purchased on Etsy, um, some other printable items. So we're gonna start with these items here. Now I did purchase, let me zoom you in a little bit. I did purchase this great little um, like decorative set. So it's got some really pretty printable sheets and my plan is to put them in uh, picture frames. So I had purchased these gold picture frames from the Dollar Tree for my in-laws 50th anniversary party. I had their um, wedding pictures in here and I had them on all of the tables. Um, so my intention is to um, use them for Thanksgiving as well. So I'll cut this out and put it here in the picture frame um, and I printed them all to be cut in five by seven size so there's the happy Thanksgiving this one here says pick your own pumpkin patch love this open daily through November I actually think I'm gonna put this out like on in my house like for decoration for the entire month I love this one here with the mushrooms Got all these beautiful watercolor mushrooms. I'll have this linked for you down below. It was one whole set. Um, this one says, hello, autumn. I love fall most of all. I can leave this one out for the whole month. I can leave all of these out for the whole month. This says, give thanks. This one says, freshly baked. I love this whoop, watercolor uh, pie. I love 
Love Love watercolor. This is a gorgeous fall wreath. Again, in the beautiful watercolor. And then we're back to the beginning. So I will cut all of those and get those into um, our frames. We'll do that here in just a moment so we can have those done and we'll, um, Maybe we'll put those out here on the camera, we'll see. So we'll do those here in just a minute. But let's talk about some of the activities that I purchased um, on Etsy. So I love Etsy for all kinds of stuff, but let's be honest, sometimes when um, we have kiddos that are, or even just people in general at, um, you know, any kind of event, we need to give them something to do with their hands, otherwise they can get a little bit antsy. So. Um, I decided to have a couple things for um, both kids and adults to utilize if they need something to do with their hands. One being this adorable fall coloring sheet. Um, I think this is perfect. I made sure that I printed several of these um, so that way anybody who wanted to could use them. You know, while we're sitting around the table chatting or watching football or whatever, this would just be something we can do with our hands. Coloring is an incredibly relaxing activity activity so it doesn't hurt to have this as an option for your guests. I love this so much um, and then you can always write um, you know the date on the back if you wanted or have your guests sign the bottom if you wanted to keep them um, and you can use them for decorative you know pieces later on in further years or just toss them it's up to you I did print all of these on 32 pound paper so this is a nicer thicker quality paper it's not a cardstock but it's definitely a nicer, thicker quality paper. So that's what I like to use for, you know, items I need to be a little bit more sturdy than, you know, just a regular printed um, piece of document, you know, um, 32 pound paper. I, I buy the hammer mill. You can get it on Amazon. I'll have it linked for you down below. It is really a great paper to have. I like to print all of like my printable planner sheets on this. Um, so I'll have it linked for you. The next thing I purchased were some kid-friendly printable activities, and these have this really great little fun border around the edge. This one says, Happy Thanksgiving, I'm thankful for, and then it says, I'll circle my favorite Thanksgiving foods, and it gives them some options. So, coloring sheet, these are drawing sheets. There's a squirrel and a scarecrow. And then this one here is um, that line game. If you have ever played this game where you have to make squares. Um, so this is a fun game. Tic-tac-toe, basically like you're at a restaurant. You know what I mean? Stuff for kids to do. Word scramble. This is always fun. A crossword puzzle. This would be fun for a kiddo to do with an adult. So, you know, with um, with a grandma or grandpa or an older cousin or uncle or aunt that they don't get to see very often. These are great activities for them to do together. A word find. I love word searches. Pumpkin pie maze. A fall hayride maze. This looks like a lot of fun. And then a corn maze. I think there's one more maze there is the turkey trot maze. So all of those pages are, they came in a, um, in a kit that I purchased, like a whole set. Again, I'll have it linked for you down below, but um, again, just another option that I think will be great for kids to do while they're hanging out. Um, my island can be utilized for that. I also have lap desks. They can also do it here at the table. Um, they can also spread out on the floor. Uh, they can also be outside on the deck, weather permitting. Um, and this too is also printed on 32 pound paper. So I also am gonna have like a kid table. We're gonna talk tables and setup and everything in a future video, but um, I will be having a designated like kiddo table where I'll have a lot of these items um, along with crayons and things like that so that they have stuff to do. That way if a teenager ends up using their phone or something, um, it doesn't irritate, you know, um, family members or anything like that. It's a different space where the rules are a little bit different. So uh, let's talk about another item that I found. So this is a fun game. It's called Roll a Turkey. And what you do is you get M&Ms and you have to fill your turkey. So if you notice, the turkey's feathers are all these different color circles. So you roll the dice and depending on what number you roll, you get to put that color on your, um, 
on your turkey feather and you can't eat them until you fill the turkey feathers and um, whoever fills their turkey first, I guess wins. I don't even know if you have to play a competitive game if it's more just for yourself. So I am gonna laminate these just so that I can reuse them every year. I might actually laminate the mazes as well. Um, I can laminate most of these. I can laminate the mazes. Um, I can laminate, I think, almost every single one. And that way we can just reuse them and the kiddos can just use um, dry erase marker. I have a ton. So I'm gonna laminate all of this. I'm not going to laminate this one because um, I want to keep these uh, and with whatever answer you know they put on these. I love that. But these I'll also laminate. These are also on 32 pound paper. I do wish that I had printed these on cardstock just because they're a game and they'll be a little. They would have been a little bit more sturdy. But what I'm thinking is they could put these on a small little paper plate. That way, um, if the M&Ms fall off, they're not like rolling all over the place. So just another fun little activity for kiddos to do while they're here. Adults can do this too. Um, again, another item I will link for you down in the description box below. And as usual, just a little PSA. If I forget to link anything, please don't hesitate to let me know. I do forget, it happens. Um, I am a very, very busy person, so if I forget to link something and I've said I was going to, don't hesitate to be like, hey girl, what happened? Um, I will be more than happy to um, find that link for you. So, while we have a few seconds, why don't we go ahead and cut out some of these really great designs and get them put into the picture frames because I'm dying to see what they're gonna look like and um, yeah, let's go ahead and get those cut out. Okay, you guys, I am seriously obsessed with all of these. This one's my favorite for sure with the really sweet pie, um, but I love them all. Like the pumpkin patch, I love this one. The Hello Autumn, 
I love fall most of all. So very pretty. The mushrooms. Oh, I love the mushrooms. And then the happy Thanksgiving, of course. So I just am obsessed with these. And you know, like I said, these are from the Dollar Tree, these little, um, these little frames and they are really great. Here's the other two as well. Um, these are here, they're also equally as gorgeous, but I just am so in love with these and I'm so thankful that I found these and um, I will have them linked for you down below. You'll have to check your Dollar Tree for the picture frames, but what a fun way to have some really great fall and Thanksgiving decor. So I'm gonna find a couple of places where I can put some of these for now. Um, I'm also gonna use them to decorate the dessert area where we're gonna have the pie um, as well as the um, island when I'm um, setting out the food. So um, I don't wanna put them all out and I can always print more if I need to, but I'm just so in love with these. I, I'm so happy with how they turned out. friends so that is it for part two of my Thanksgiving first timer series I hope you're enjoying this I am having a lot of fun and please know that if you have decided to move on to Christmas that is totally all good you are more than welcome to do so if you're not though I hope that you are excited to see some Thanksgiving content here on YouTube I know I am desperate for Thanksgiving content, so I'm really happy to be able to put this out and share it with you. So until the next one, my friends, I'll see you very soon. Take care. Hello my friends and welcome back to another cook with me video. In today's video we're going to be starting a series of a few videos where we're going to be prepping for Thanksgiving cooking. Now I am not doing a full Thanksgiving meal that is just way too much money time and food that I don't want to make my family eat over and over and over again. However, we're going to talk about a couple of the sides. Today our focus is on my favorite part of the meal and that is dessert. I'm not going to be focusing on your traditional pumpkin pie or apple pie. Those are things that you can see repeated all over the internet. So today I'm going to be showing you a few different things that I have planned for our Thanksgiving this year, which is our first Thanksgiving we're hosting. Not only in our new house, but in general. Today we're going to be making this beautiful apple rose tart. It is not only stunning and a showstopper in that sense, but I'm hoping it is absolutely delicious. I've never had it before, but I love a good uh, fruit tart that you can top with fresh whipped cream. I'm so excited for that. We're also gonna be making delicious little strawberry rhubarb hand pies. There is something just so sweet about a tiny little pie, and I am excited to make these little hand pies. My family loves strawberry rhubarb, and we're gonna do it super easy. We're we're also gonna be making delicious pumpkin snickerdoodle cookies. My kids love these. And we're also going to be making some festive chocolate dipped strawberries. So let's go ahead and get started. 
To get us started today, we are going to get our snickerdoodle uh, batter made and put into the fridge. Now the thing with snickerdoodles is the batter always has to um, cool before you can bake it. So it's gotta sit in your refrigerator for usually around an hour or more. So give yourself enough time, make sure that you, if you're doing like I'm doing now, like you're making more than one thing, put it um, in your fridge first, get it done, and these can be made ahead of time. They can be made ahead of time and frozen, so I could even freeze these now and then they would be ready for Thanksgiving, which I might do because Halloween is, well, Halloween is Monday. Uh, when I'm filming this, it is Saturday, so I could just freeze these because I know my family is not going to need them. They're going to have plenty of options for candy. So that's probably what we're going to do. Let's get this batter going. All right, to get us started with our cookie dough, we are going to start off with two sticks of butter. So a total of half a cup of butter. You want this to be room temperature and that's going to allow it to blend easily and to uh, become just a nice smooth consistency. Mine was not as uh, room temperature as it needed to be because it was pretty cool that day, but um, I did my best. So you can see I'm having to use a plastic spatula here to kind of push it out of my mixer blades just because it was not as soft and smooth as I was hoping it would be, but that's okay. We still made it work. So just go ahead and blend that until it's nice and mixed. And then you're going to add in half a cup of pumpkin puree, uh, which probably would have been about uh, a little less than half of the can, but I did decide to measure it out because we are baking. This isn't cooking. I don't want to just kind of take my liberties with it. You got to be a little bit more precise when you're baking. So half a cup of pumpkin puree. Next up, you'll need some granulated sugar. For this, you just need one cup of granulated sugar. So you're gonna add that into your batter. Next up, you're gonna need brown sugar. You need a half a cup of brown sugar. Now you're gonna go ahead and add in your spices. So we're gonna start with two teaspoons of vanilla. You're going to need about a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice, followed by a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and then a half a teaspoon of salt. And you're also going to need some baking powder. You need one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Once you have all those in your batter, go ahead and combine them until they're smooth, as smooth as you can get them. And then we're gonna add in the rest of our uh, wet and dry ingredients. We're gonna start off with um, a little bit of scraping of the sides here. So if you're using um, a stand mixer and not a hand mixer like I'm using, you'll wanna make sure you do this as well, but just scrape the sides really well to help make sure that all of your ingredients are fully incorporated. It's really easy for things to get stuck on the side of your bowls, and so it's important that you are using that plastic spatula to scrape the sides. We're gonna go ahead and add in one egg and get that fully combined. And then we're going to gradually add in two and two thirds cups of all purpose flour and that will round out our dough.
once again, we're just going to make sure that all of the sides are fully scraped and all of the ingredients are fully incorporated. And then we're going to grab some plastic wrap to cover our batter and we're going to pop this into the refrigerator for at least an hour. So our cookie dough is in the refrigerator and that is going to stiffen up so that we can easily scoop it out. Next up, we're gonna start working on our apple tart. So I'm gonna show you the picture. This is a recipe from Natasha's Kitchen. My very first Cook With Me video, I followed one of her recipes for tres leches cake that is our absolute favorite. So I know this is not going to disappoint, but this is what the apple tart should look like. Uh, beautiful rose apple tart. Now the Recipe calls for Granny Smith apples. However, I am not a Granny Smith apple fan, so I'm gonna be using um, Gala apples today for this recipe. Um, you can follow it as it's meant to be. That's completely up to you, but that's what I'm gonna be doing today. So let's go ahead and get this uh, deliciously beautiful apple tart going. To get started with this recipe, you're going to need a spring pan. A spring pan just means that the side does come off and it allows you to easily remove whatever you've cooked inside. Usually you cook like a cheesecake in here. We're gonna start off by buttering the bottom and the sides of our spring pan. You don't have to go all the way up um, on the sides, just enough so that your crust doesn't stick. Once you have your pan fully coated, we're gonna get started with our crust. You're gonna start off with one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, a fourth of a cup of granulated sugar, a fourth of a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of baking powder, and then we're gonna cut in our butter. So for the butter, you're going to need approximately half a cup or eight tablespoons of unsalted butter that is chilled. So you want to make sure that you take the butter directly from your refrigerator so that way it's nice and cold and you're going to cut it into cubes which will make cutting it into your flour much easier. your butter uh, diced up and put into your flour you're going to go ahead and use a pastry cutter to cut this in if you don't have a pastry cutter you can use a fork or your fingers either work just fine just be careful if you're using your fingers that you don't melt your butter too much The final ingredients for our crust are our wet ingredients. You're gonna need a third of a cup of heavy cream and one egg. Go ahead and blend those together just by whisking them. And then we're gonna add those into our dry ingredients. Now it's really important when we add this last part to our dry ingredients that we don't over um, stir. So you're just going to kind of drizzle it on top and then you're going to grab a spatula or a spoon, a wooden spoon, and just fold it in. Just fold it in enough so that it starts to come together, but don't worry about mixing it until it's completely incorporated. You want it to still be kind of lumpy, then you're going to form it into your um, spring pan. So just make sure you get it, um, you know, stirred enough that it's, you know, a part of the other ingredients, but not so incorporated that it isn't um, chunky anymore. Go ahead and toss it into your spring pan and then use your hands to spread it out. You're gonna wanna make sure that you go up the side just a little bit so that any of those juices from your egg your, I'm sorry, your apples, I was going to say your eggs, uh, stay in your crust and you don't lose all of those delic delicious juices when it's in the oven. Now 
we're gonna go ahead and get started on our apples. So you're gonna start by peeling them, making sure that they're skinless, and then we're going to core them. I could not find my apple peeler that was also a, a core, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use this paring knife, but I normally have a peeler that's got a sharp edge that I can use really smoothly for coring. This definitely did not work as nicely as I was hoping it would, but it did the job nonetheless, and we got them all cored. Once they are cored and de-skinned, you're gonna go ahead and slice them into little thin pieces that are about 1 16th of an inch. That's going to allow us to um, stack them on top of each other in that really pretty um, rose design. Once your apples are all sliced, add them into a mixing bowl with one fourth of a cup of granulated sugar and a fourth of a teaspoon of cinnamon. Give that a really good mix and your apples are ready to start being layered into your tart. Now, I just want to mention that as you watch me start to layer up my tart, I will say that I definitely did not follow Natasha's instructions very well here. Hers were a lot more layered. Mine are very spaced out. I had a lot of leftover apples. When I make this again on Thanksgiving, I will make sure that I layer these a lot closer together so that all of the apples get used. Um, it definitely didn't have the height that Natasha's had, but definitely had the flavor. Once you're done layering all of your apples, you're going to cut about a, a tablespoon and a half of butter, and you're just going to put those cubes on top so that they melt nice and um, juicy on your apples and make them extra delicious. Then go ahead and pop this into the oven. You're going to bake this tart at 375 for roughly about half. Okay, so we've got our apple tart in the oven. Hope it turns out okay. It looked beautiful and smelt delicious. I snagged a couple of little pieces of apple with the sugar and cinnamon, so yummy. Um, so that's in the oven. While that's going, we're gonna go ahead and get started on our hand pies. So basically, a hand pie just means that it's small, that it's completely enclosed, and you can literally eat it with your hand. You probably won't, but you can. And what I'm gonna be using today to make my hand pies is this adorable little set here from William Sonoma that has these little miniature um, pie uh, cutters. It's this classic mini pie molds. I snagged this on the William Sonoma website, I think back in September. Um, however, it is still available on the website. I will have it linked for you down below. Like I mentioned before, there's something so irresistible about miniature pies, hand pies especially. So here is what the molds look like. They're just little tiny molds and they do um, open up. So what you do is you cut uh, one side of your pie dough with this side, one side with this side, and then you put them on the inside. These are serrated here. Put them on the inside, you put some filling in there and then you close it up to seal it up. Um, I today am going to be utilizing the cute little round one that looks like a traditional pie 
because I think that those will look so perfect for Thanksgiving and they're gonna look so cute at the dessert bar. And for our pies today, for our hand pies, we're gonna be doing strawberry rhubarb. Now I chose strawberry rhubarb because I know that my mother-in-law is bringing um, fresh made pumpkin pie as well as um, an apple pie. And we've got an apple tart in the oven, so I'm gonna be doing strawberry rhubarb. Now, to make my life easy, I'm gonna be using this strawberry rhubarb filling, this pie filling that you can find in your baking aisle at your grocery store. It's delicious and it does the job. My kids love strawberry rhubarb. It's a little bit tart, but you can do this with any kind of pie filling that you prefer. Strawberry, cherry, apple, whatever you prefer, you can use that if you like. So let's, my mouth is watering just talking about all of these pies. So let's go ahead and get these going. The other thing I want to mention is that today we're going to be using ready-made pie crust. Now this is the Walmart brand. I have never tried this one. Um, I ordered my groceries and unfortunately they were out of the Pillsbury one that I ordered. So we're going to give this one a shot. It's really affordable. It's less than $3. You get two pie crusts in here. I think that's a really great pr price. You can make your own pie crust if you want, but for the sake of today and making sure this video goes smoothly, I felt like ready-made pie crust was the way to go. Nobody has to know. So to get us started, I'm opening up one package of pie crust. So this is essentially top or bottom of a pie crust. Each box comes with two of, I'm sorry, four of these. So enough to make two pies. And I find them to be incredibly easy to work with. So I just sliced it in half to make it easier to maneuver my uh, cutter on. And then, like I said, I'm starting by cutting the bottom piece, and then I'm also going to cut the top piece. I will say that I had to make sure that I uh, really pressed down and um, made sure that every little uh, diamond shape was completely pushed because it, they didn't just pop out very easily. So that first time I did it, I definitely didn't do it um, as smoothly as I wanted to. So this second time, I'm gonna show you here that I just kind of pushed it down over those diamonds a little bit more to make sure that it fully cut through the dough and this worked out perfectly. Once I had all of my dough cut, I put it on the inside of the cutter or the, the pie mold. And then I added in my strawberry rhubarb filling. And then I used a little bit of egg wash along the edges just, just to seal it. And then I crimped it, closed it up here, gave it a good crimp. And then I took it out and put it onto a lined cooking dish, baking, I'm sorry, cookie sheet. I've got uh, silicone liners here that I'm using, but if you don't have those, you could just use a little bit of Pam, I think would be perfectly fine, or even a little bit of butter. And honestly, I don't even know if it's necessary, but I didn't want anything to stick. So again, I'm just repeating the process. I made six for today just to try them out, but I'll definitely be making more when it comes to actual Thanksgiving. They were kind of big, so I definitely think they could be shared, but they're so stinking cute, I couldn't even deal. Once I got them all onto the sheet, I did add a final top coat of a egg wash and a sprinkle of granulated sugar just to give them some good shine and a little bit of sweetness to the top and I popped them into the oven. I did bake them at uh, 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. Just keep an eye on them. Uh, it really will depend on your oven. My oven was really hot from baking already, so just keep an eye to see exactly how long they need, but they turned out so delicious. While those are baking, we're gonna go ahead and work on our chocolate-covered strawberries. Now, these take no time at all. These were so very quick and easy to make. Just make sure that you wash your strawberries, give them a good pat dry. You're gonna melt your candy melts in the microwave, just following the directions on the back of the package, and then you're going to dip them. 
Now, after I dipped them, I didn't realize how quickly they were going to set up. They set up so fast. So I had to go back and kind of re-dip just so that I could put my sprinkles on. So if I were you, just put your sprinkles on after every single dip because man, they dry really quickly. When I make these for Thanksgiving, I'll also be making some white chocolate ones. And I'm also thinking I'll do a little bit of white uh, chocolate drizzle onto the regular chocolate ones as well. Just to add in a little extra bit of interest to the strawberries. Right as I was finishing up the strawberries, our apple tart was ready to come out of the oven and man, did it smell good. Once it cooled just a tiny bit, I was able to take it out of the spring uh, pan and get it onto my Ikea cake platter. I absolutely love this cake platter. And at first I just put the whole entire thing on the cake platter, left the bottom on, but it was sliding all over the place. I, I did end up taking it off. I also pulled out our hand pies and those came out perfect. I cannot wait to eat them. Now we're gonna work on our snickle, snickerdoodle cookies, I'm sorry. So you're going to add into a, a plate or a bowl, you're going to add a half a cup of sugar, and you're also going to add half a teaspoon of cinnamon and half a teaspoon of pumpkin spice, pumpkin pie spice. This is what you're going to roll your cookies in. So grab your chilled dough. You're going to use some kind of scoop. I'm using a cookie scoop, but you could just use a tablespoon or teaspoon. Go ahead and roll it in your sugar and spice mix and then add it to a parchment lined baking sheet. Um, just repeat this process until all of your dough is made into cookies and then you can pop this into the oven. You're gonna bake these at uh, 350 for about 11 minutes. You might need to do up to 13, but keep an eye because they do cook quickly. And just like that, all of our Thanksgiving baking is done. Okay, my friends, I have officially been baking all day. It is time to try these. I am so excited. I think the thing I am most excited to try and the thing I am the most proud of is my apple tart. Oh my gosh, it came out so pretty. Let's get it cut. I'm dying to try a piece. Now, Natasha's instructions say to use a serrated knife when you cut it, so that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm so nervous, but oh my gosh, it smells so good. I am so excited. Oh, it cuts so beautifully. And 
Here we go. Here's a good little look. Oh my goodness. I can't wait to try this. I feel like it needs a little like powdered sugar or something. Here's an up close version of it. A nice thick crust, like a shortbread cookie. Let's give it a try. Wow. Mmm. The crust is light and buttery, like I said, like a shortbread cookie. And the tart, the apple is so sweet and yummy. Mm-hmm. Okay, next up, I definitely want to give the rhubarb pies a try. You guys, I love this filling. It is so good. It's light and sweet. And um, it's not tart like a typical strawberry rhubarb pie. So if you like that, you probably won't like this filling. Um, it's not tart, but it is so good. Mmm. Mm-hmm. And the pie crust is not very sweet at all, if at all. So it keeps it, you know, really balanced. And of course you could eat this with your hand, but I prefer the fork. The last thing we're gonna try today is the snickerdoodle cookie. Um, they are fresh out of the oven, so they're still kind of steamy. I don't know if it will show on camera, but oh my goodness. Mm. If I had to describe this cookie, I would say it's like a pumpkin spice churro. Not overly sweet. Um, and the cinnamon and pumpkin pie spice, make the cinnamon especially, makes it taste like a churro. And the pumpkin pie makes it, pie uh, flavoring makes it taste like a pumpkin bread or something. So it's like a pumpkin churro. Mm. And it's light and fluffy on the inside with just a little bit of crisp on the outside. So good. All right, my friends, so that brings us to the end of today's Cook With Me video. I hope that you found some Thanksgiving inspiration, really some holiday inspiration. You can use these recipes for any holiday. We'll be using them for Thanksgiving, so hopefully you found some motivation and some inspiration. I'll have all the recipes linked for you down below, as well as those amazing uh, pie cutters from um, Williams-Sonoma, and until the next one, my friends, happy eating. Mm -hmm.